This is a demonstration of the macros that I've written for my computer that work in Excel 2007. And the macros will give you graphical outputs for this device, the Sunny Beam by SMA. The only thing you can do is hook up a USB cable and download CSV files which represent one file per every individual day. You get one CSV file per day and you need your own way to be able to graph that. So I'll open up my Excel spreadsheet and the first thing you see is a graph of daily power production and this is a sample graph down here where the tabs are you've got daily power the next tab is monthly power this is a sample graph next tab or the last tab is for yearly power production the macros that I've written will only work with a sunny beam that has the 1.07.06R firmware because every firmware upgrade that SMA comes out with they change slightly where the data is put in the CSV file so I had to write the macro to grab the data in the specific cells where it exists and this software has only been tested, my macros have only been tested with the 1.07.06R firmware. If you open up Microsoft and you do not have macros enabled or you do not see this developer tab up here at the top, you need to go and open up the icon at the upper left, come down here to Excel options and then select the button that says show developer tab in the ribbon click on that so it's checked you got a check mark click OK and that will bring up the developer tab on developer you have macros here and when I open up this I have three macros daily graph monthly graph and yearly graph so let's go generate a daily graph press run and I switch automatically to the tab which is for daily power little box comes up here to tell me what it is you're about to do say OK to that and then go navigate to where you have stored the CSV files on your own computer you need to get them out of the sunny beam and into your computer so I'll go navigate here to where I've got my files and here's all my CSV files so I'll click on one select it and I automatically draw the graph now this graph has a bar for every 10 minutes this is instantaneous power and this is every entry that came out of the CSV file for that day down here at the very bottom it tells me where the file was the complete path and the file name that I used to generate the graph. Up here the file name again is given to you and the total daily kilowatt hours that you generated is in this box here upper right. Over on the left is all the data that the macro retrieved in every 10 minute intervals or increments out of the CSV file. So I can scroll down and see that I started producing power about 6.10 in the morning and that continued all the way till about 8.10 at night and then the system shut off. So th this was all the information out of the CSV file that was imported into this spreadsheet. When I created this graph I purposely didn't go from midnight to midnight I started the graph at about 4 in the morning and went till about 10 o'clock at night and I did that so that it would keep the width of this graph down to a reasonable size. In other words if you've got a system that's producing power before 4 in the morning or after 10 at night then we'll have to create a different graph for you. 
once I've created my first graph, you can see that the sample graph in red, all those words have gone away. And if I want to try to run daily power again, when I get this prompt up and select OK, I'm already at the folder. I can just pick another file. Let me go here to a date where I know I had a lot of cloud cover. You can see the difference it made here. I only made 27. If you want to know what you've this. done for several days or a week or a month in a row, you can come over here to the monthly power tab. Again, this is a sample graph which shows the full month of July of my system. What you do is bring up the macros and select monthly graph and run it. It'll clear that out and it'll tell you what it's about to do to generate a monthly graph. It says that you can start with the first CSV file and choose anything from 1 up to 31 days to plot. So you can plot for a week if you want or plot for a whole month. But you do need to, to know if your month is 29, 30, or 31 days and put in the right number of days. So I'll start at, let's say, come down to August 1st. I'll plot for the month of August. And August has 31 days in it. So I'll start at the file for August 1st. And then it says enter the number of days. I'm going to enter 31 days. Hit OK. And now what it's doing is opening up every one of those files and grabbing the total kilowatt hours that was generated on each day and plotting it. Then it also lists the dates here for you. These were all the CSV files that it opened up and here's the power that was generated as a whole, a total for each day. Adds it up and then also averages it out for the 31 days I had a daily average kilowatt hour generation of 39.703. My total for the month was 1,230. If your system was offline for any number of days, it'll simply skip over those days. To give you an example, here I'll run monthly again, and this time I'm going to start at May 30th and let's go for 20 days just to pick a number say OK and you'll notice I have a couple gaps in here my system was offline for two days on June 1st and 2nd and then it was also off again on June 10th and 11th so those days are missing but I have a total of 20 days from the day I chose to start and on my starting day 530 it was only on for just a tiny bit of time just generated 0.81 kilowatt hours so there's your monthly graph to do a yearly graph example of yearly once again I will select yearly graph hit run tells me what it's about to do and let's start a yearly graph at let's say July 1st all you have to do is pick the starting day now depending on the speed of your microprocessor this might take a while it's having to open up every single file for 365 days and read the power output of that CSV file the macro is always also written so that it accounts for leap year. So if you're plotting a year that has February 29th, that will be considered and included. So I started in July, and this is the present day where we are right now at the filming of this video. So we've generated this much power, and I've still got this much to go for an entire year. The uh, daily average is spread out over the entire year, so right now it's only showing 10 kilowatt hours as a daily average. My 12 month total represents all of this. And you'll notice that there is 
actually space for 13 months. I've started exactly on the first day of a month and the file name down here, this represents the last day of the month. So this is all of July, ending July 31st. This is all of August, ending August 31st. All of September, ending on the 30th, so on and so forth. But if I started, say, in the middle of the month, if I started in the middle of July, then to plot an entire year, I'd have to go into the next year and plot the beginning of July to end up 365 days later. So if you got half a month here, you'll have the rest of the that month in the following year will be plotted over here. So there's space to plot a full year's worth of data. Now once you've generated any of your graphs, what you started out with was a macro or an Excel template. So when you go to save, you will not save over the template that you opened up. It will open up an Excel spreadsheet and you'll have to pick a place to put it and say save and I'm just saving it without the macros attached. So there you go, it's on my desktop. If you'd like now. to export the graph once you've created it, one possible way of doing that is to click on the graph, right click and say copy and then open up Microsoft Word, got a blank page, and you can right click but you don't want to say paste by itself because if you just hit paste notice that it crunches letters together, it tries to fit it in the page and it messes things up. Okay there's stuff missing here so let me back up, forget about that. Instead of just paste I want to do a paste special. There's different ways to enable paste special in Microsoft when you figure out where it is you get paste special open and then paste it as a JPEG or as a picture and when you say OK to that it pastes it full size but now you can grab a corner and resize it and notice that it remains intact everything's there I do offer these macros for sale on my website the three of them come together in one Excel template you can get a hold of me through my website, kinert.com, K-E-I-N-E-R-T.com. And if you're not sure if your particular Sunnybeam is going to work, send me your CSV files. I'll put it in this macro and send you back the results so you can see if it's going to work for you or not. Here's some pictures I took when I was installing this system. I have a concrete tile roof. These are the tiles with the rods or the bars in place, the rails. And you can see that this is a real clean insulation using what's called a tile hook. The rails attach to a tile hook. And here's a picture with a row of tiles removed. And you can see how the tile hook goes through and mounts into the rafters of the roof. And then the tile goes over it. The only thing you have to do is just take your concrete tile and cut out a little notch just enough so that the tile hook has a, a place to get through. Here's the picture of it uh, as it's sneaking through between two rows of tiles. I also put a conduit down for all the wires to run through for the solar panels and they all enter into these conduits and then go down through a roof jack, bar, ground rod. That's for lightning protection. You can see my wires come into the conduit and then I put silicone glue here in a removable cap and seal this up so water cannot get into the conduit. and several pictures of the finished insulation. 33 panels, 7,000 watt system. Thanks for watching and good luck in your solar project.